This is going to be the most complete Genshin Impact Beginner's Guide. Why do I say this? Well, that's because I'm going to explain what every single button in this game does. I will go into as much detail as I possibly can in explaining everything that makes this game what it is. Of course, it's going to be split into multiple parts, so as to make it easier to find exactly what you're looking for. Also, I'll be putting chapters on the video. Just hover over the play bar and you'll see it split into different chapters with each chapter covering a specific topic. Before we start, I'm going to assume that you have played the game for at least an hour or two. That is because right off the bat what you can do in the game is very limited. You will need to follow the tutorial that the game already has and does a pretty good job with. My guide comes in once you've already unlocked more features such as wishing, events and battle pass and so on. So, if you're a new player trying to learn how to play, and I explain something that you haven't unlocked yet, then make sure to come back to the video once you do, to hear a detailed explanation on what it is that you just unlocked. Another thing to note is that I'll be making this video through the PC version of Genshin Impact. So if you're playing on another platform, then some things might look slightly different. Of course, no functionality will actually differ. Without further ado, let's begin. This is my current screen. We'll start by looking at this button right here, which is the menu. You can access it either by pressing the escape key or clicking it manually by holding the alt key and clicking on it. We have three main things we can look at here. The player profile, a sidebar, and the main menu. Let's start with the player profile. This is your account avatar. By clicking on it, you are able to switch your account avatar with a picture of one of the characters you own. Below the account avatar, we have the UID. The UID is your account's code that other players can use to add you as a friend. If you wish to send your UID code to a friend, just click on the copy button and then paste it where you need to. This is the nickname. This is what other players will see as being your nickname when they click on their friend list. You are able to change your nickname whenever you want, and we'll talk about how in a minute. This is your signature. You are free to input whatever you want. I have written what my YouTube channel name is for some shameless self-promotion. Next up, we have this little pen icon here. If we click on it, it will reveal a lot of new options for you. If you click on Edit Profile, then you are presented with this screen. Here you can see some of your stats, such as total achievements and your current progress in Spiral Abyss. You can also showcase some of the characters you have here for your friends to see. Name card is similar to Character Showcase. You can show off some of the name cards you have. You also have a toggle here if you want to make the character information private. Change avatar is exactly what we did before, when we clicked on the avatar itself. You can change your avatar. Change name card is where you would go to change this profile background you see here. I'll change it real quick, to show you how it works. There's a ton of different name cards, with different unlocking requirements. You can see where to obtain it by reading the description here. Next up is edit nickname. You can change your nickname here. Edit Signature. You can change your signature here. Copy UID is also self-explanatory. Now we have the Adventure Rank. This is where it becomes a little more interesting. The Adventure Rank is your overall account rank. You level up by doing different activities in the game, which reward Adventure Rank experience. Activities such as Story Quests, World Quests, resin usage, which we'll talk about, and so on. There is no real way to grind this up quickly. You will naturally level up just by playing the game. The adventure rank is extremely important. What it does is that it determines the quality of the rewards you receive from completing activities. Adventure rank is linked to the world level. Starting from adventure rank 15, every five levels will increase your world level by one. So AR1 through AR15 is world level 0, 
Once you hit AR-20, your word level increases to 1. At AR-25, it increases to 2, and so on. Examples of rewards from activities range from artifact domains, talent material domains, EXP and more are ley lines, and more. As you play the game, this will become less confusing, so don't worry about it too much. Next up is birthday, which is the birthday you input at the start of the game. Let's move further down. Shop. This is where you can spend your hard-earned money on the game. The first thing you'll see is this thing called Blessing of the Welkin Moon. The Welkin Moon is similar to a subscription. You pay, in my case, $5, and you instantly get 300 Genesis Crystals and a daily gift of 90 Primo Gems for the next 30 days. You can purchase this up to 6 times, so it will be active for the next 6 months. We'll talk about what Genesis Crystals and Primo Gems are in a bit. Gift Shop There's a few more options here, including the Welkin Moon we talked about. These bundles here give you some character development materials that you can buy with Genesis Crystals. Personally, I don't recommend getting these, as they are quite bad value. Paimon's Bargains Here you can buy lots of more things. But first, let me explain all the currencies you can use here. The first one is Star Glitter. You earn Star Glitter when you wish and get either a 4-star character or a weapon, or a 5-star character or weapon. So you could say this is a type of premium currency that you can only obtain by wishing in the game. You can use it to buy more wishes, or to buy a selection of two 4-star characters that change each month. There's also a variation of 4-star weapons that also change each month. And finally, some materials. I recommend using Star Glitter only on Intertwined Fates, or on one of the characters. But please do research on the characters first, to see if you need them. Next we have Stardust. Stardust is pretty much the same as Star Glitter. Only that you get it for every single thing you get when you wish. It's not limited to 5 stars and 4 stars. You get a lot more Stardust, but the rewards are different. The absolute best thing you can get with Stardust is these fates here. You can buy 5 of each and it resets each month. So you get 10 wishes in total each month basically for free. Keep in mind that it's 5 on the featured banner and 5 on the standard banner. We'll go into more details when I talk about the wishing system. Then there's purchase with Primo Gems. If you've played the game for any length of time, then you may have noticed that you got some Primo Gems. You can use Primo Gems to exchange them for Fates. You can get Primo Gems from completing various activities in the game. This currency is extremely limited, so use it wisely. Finally, there's Crystal Top Up. In short, here you can outright buy Genesis Crystals with hard cash. Genesis Crystals can be converted to Primo Gems and the ratio is 1 to 1. So if you buy this pack of 60 Genesis Crystals, then you can convert those 60 Genesis Crystals to 60 Primo Gems. If this is the first time you're visiting the top-up page, then yours might look a little different. You see all of those different options here. Before you buy anything, you should have a first-time buy bonus, which is that you get double the amount. An example would be this one here, which is $100, and you get 6,480 Genesis Crystals and the bonus of another 6,480. In my case, for the other ones the bonus is much smaller, as I previously used them, so I don't have the first time bonus anymore. Party Setup Here you are able to choose the characters you want to put in your team. You can use a maximum of 4 characters at once. If you want to change them, just click on the character you wish to change then switch with the one you want to use. You can also do a quick setup. Here's how it works. If you already have some characters selected, just deselect them, then select the ones you want to click, and save settings. Above there's these four dots. These are team slots, which means that you can set up four different teams that you can switch to quickly. Just use the arrows on the sides to move through them. If you want to change the team, just click on Deploy.
Friends. This is your list of friends. You also have a list of users you previously blocked. To add a friend, click on this button here, then paste their UID and click search. The other button here is a list of players you previously co opted with. So if you joined a player's world in the past, here is where you can see their profile. Achievements If you've played games before, then this should be rather easy to understand. There's lots of different categories. You can see the achievements you've completed and the ones you have yet to complete. You also get some Primo Gems for completing them. Archive This is a glossary of all the different things in the game. You can see a list of available equipment, whether or not you've obtained it. Living beings, the in-game tutorials, and so on. Feel free to browse this feature at your own leisure. Character Archive This is the same as Archive. You can see all the characters you own, as well as the ones you don't. The ones you don't own are grayed out. Character Here you can see all the characters you own. This is the place you would go to equip them with weapons, artifacts, check constellations, upgrade talents, and read about them. I'll go more in-depth about this in a different video, as this is more expansive than the purpose of the current one. Inventory Simply a list of all the items that you have. From left to right, the options are Weapons Artifacts Character development items Food Materials Gadget Quest Precious items And furnishings at first, your inventory will be quite empty, so you shouldn't have much trouble keeping track of what you get as you play. If there's anything you obtain and don't know what it's for, then I suggest looking it up online, but I doubt that will be the case most of the time. Quests Just a list of quests you currently have. The options at the top are The quests that are in progress Archon quests, which are the main story quests Story quests which are quests involving the main cast of characters. Commission quests. This is something you unlock relatively early in the game. They are a type of daily quest that you can do four of every day. And world quests, which are side quests that you get from NPCs. At the bottom, there is this button, story quests. As you increase your adventure rank, you will also get story quests they involve the cast of playable characters, like Deluke, Venti, Jean, and so on. In order to unlock a story quest, you need a story key. To get story keys, you need to complete 8 daily commissions. So you would need 2 days to get one key, as you receive 4 commissions every day. This here is Hangout Events. Hangout Events are similar to story quests, but a lot lighter. They still involve some of the playable characters, but are more of a visual novel type of content. You'll see what I mean once you start doing them. Map Just a button to access the world map. You can also do this by pressing the M key if you're playing on PC. Events You unlock events at Adventure Rank 20. Events are limited time activities that change over time. Currently this event is active, and it says here the time it has remaining. Make sure to always participate in these events, as they are one of the most rewarding type of content currently in the game. In terms of items in the game. Or Primo Gems. Test Run is where you can test the current characters that are on the featured banner. So before deciding to wish on a banner, make sure to use this feature to see if you would enjoy playing those characters. Adventurer Handbook. There's lots of things to see here. First one is experience. When you start the game, you'll have various missions you can complete here for some rewards. Most of them you will complete passively as you play the game. Then there's commissions. These are the four daily quests you receive. You can see here the rewards for each of them. Domains. 
Here you can find the dungeons of the game. But first let's talk about resin. This number here is called resin. You need resin to collect rewards from these dungeons. For a domain you need 20 resin to get the rewards. Resin recharges at a rate of 1 resin per 8 minutes. So unfortunately you can't just farm domains for the rewards. You need to wait for it to recharge before you can claim the rewards again. Trown's domains are the weekly bosses. Currently there's 4 weekly bosses you can do. Claiming rewards from weekly boss costs 60 resin. But for the first 3 you do, you will have that cost cut in half. This is a new addition added with the latest boss. So you can do the first 3 weekly bosses for 30 resin, and then do the 4th one for 60 resin, in whichever order you wish. Enemies This is a list of enemies in the overworld. You can check their rewards, and you can also click on navigate to see where you can find them on the map. If you lack a particular kind of material, just look for the monster that drops it, and then go defeat it. Wish Wish is the summoning system in the game. There will always be three banners in the game. The first one is a character event wish banner. This is where new characters will be added every 20 days. Next is the weapon banner. Here you can wish to have a higher chance of getting weapons for your characters, which also lasts for 20 days, and adds new weapons. Last is the standard banner. This banner will always be available, and it has a static cast of characters and weapons that never changes. I will go more in depth about the wish system in a different video, as this is also a more expensive topic. Battle Pass The Battle Pass is a feature where you can get rewards based on some missions it asks you to do. The first page shows you all the rewards that you can get. The Battle Pass is also a timed thing. There's pretty much one Battle Pass each patch version. Co-op Mode Here you can see a list of random active players. You can choose to search for someone, or request to join a random player's world. Community This will open up a browser tab which redirects you to the Nihoyo forums. Feedback If you have any kind of feedback for the developers, use this button here to send them a message. <sighs> Alright, phew, that took a while. We're almost done. I hope I managed to keep your interest so far. Um, let's talk about this sidebar here. Take photo. This is how you can take pictures in game. You have a slew of options to make the picture look however you want. Once you're done, just click enter or your platform equivalent to take the photo. Notices. This is where you can find information about the current and upcoming updates to the game. Make sure to keep up to date with this, so you don't miss anything. Time. Here you can change the time of day. You might want to use this option if, for example, you have to talk to an NPC, but they are only spawned during certain times of day. Usually some NPCs will despawn at night, so this is helpful for that, and many other things. Settings This is where you can change various settings in the game. Depending on your platform, this might look different. I'm not going to go into details here, as this highly depends on your platform and preferences. So just have a look here and change wherever you need to. And finally, quit game. If you want to quit the game, just click here. Alright, this took a lot longer than I expected. I'm sure that a lot of the things I talked about in this video didn't necessarily need to be explained, but I figured I made a video explaining every little thing in the game's interface for anyone who might have trouble understanding what does what. I really hope this video was helpful to you. If you enjoyed watching it, consider subscribing and liking the video. That would be absolutely great. Next time, I will go in-depth on the wishing system in the game. And until next time, remember to keep your gaming habits healthy.